Today's story is called Larry's New Neighbor Part 2 by Julie Jolly. If you guys remember, Vulcan became our neighbor in the last um, part of this uh, story. So now this continues off where the last video left off. The shaman of Koism found out about what Vulcan was doing and called a meeting of everyone to try and figure out a way to stop him. They sacrificed a clubber because hobbits had gone extinct. Uh, you guys are catching on to my lack of wanting to kill hobbits. It seems like everybody is here to meet with the Shaman of Croism to try and figure out what Vulcan's up to and how to stop Vulcan from doing Vulcan things. You've got Sam the Scarecrow and King Philip, Mr. Death himself. You have Zeus, you have a Shogun and Mr. Cupid. You've got Bjorn and Euler and you've got the Monkey King and Ricky kind of upgraded. Kira the Pirate Queen, Artemis the... De Da Vinci's here. And then obviously the Shaman of Chromosome as a sacrifice, the poor villager trying to figure out what on earth we're going to do about Vulcan. In Vulcan's arena, Larry, Helga, and Sarge were faced with four ice giants, but Crow saved them as he always does. That's right. Sarge joined the team of Crow and Helga joined sides. It was Sarge that became the neighbor and Vulcan was pissed. I'm starting to remember the story. But we need to get rid of these ice shines so that our friends can um, survive and live happily ever after. A freaking men. Look at that. Beautiful ice shines, four different directions, and our friends are still alive. How do we get out of this arena? How do we escape Vulcan's terror? The shaman performed a ritual to bring Crow into his physical form. The stuff on the mountain is so the level well, and here we are. This is the ritual. And this poor shield bearer is our sacrifice to bring Crow back in his physical form as the, the, the fan blowers all, they all they wanted to do was just cool off this guy. But it was, just, it was too much for him to handle. Since Crow had been summoned, he couldn't protect Larry, Helga, and Sarge. But before he left, he summoned four ultra ballistas to protect them. Guys, we're still trying to fight off Valken and his ice giants. Here's our three heroes, and Crow has summoned Super Ballistas, aka Ballistas with Cheerleaders, to deal with our lovely Ice Giant friends, who are not necessarily friends as the Ballistas rapid fire. Boom, boom, wow. What is that, like one every two seconds? This Ballista after Ballista after Ballista completely ransacked and destroyed each of the Ice Giants. On the flip side, they were stuck outside. That's very convenient. Valken went to the God Making Temple to destroy it. Benny, the Soul Keeper, and Mr. Death himself tried to stop him, but failed miserably. Valken is here with all of his healers, and he is here to destroy his enemies. Yet remember, Valken does have god powers, so if we need to, we can step in and on Valken's behalf. Mr. Death is here, Benny the Bard, and the Soul Keeper, and they're here to protect. But the problem is, that's a lot of healers. Now, um, I think Mr. Death himself is about to skewer this gentleman. Yeah, so, um... Without god powers, Valken would never be able to take on Mr. Death himself. <laughs> Valken activates his god powers, banishing his enemies, completely destroying them, using the power of the undead realm from which he comes from. Crow need to figure out a way to stop Valken. They theorize that if Crow hits Valken with his sword, he might be able to take Valken's god powers. But some tribal people showed up and tried to kill Crow because he wasn't a part of their tribe. That's what happens when you've got Mount Crow in the middle of the tribe's area. Now Crow and his lovely healing priests from the dream domain have to get in there and deal with all these clubbers and spear throwers who are just trying to survive. They're just trying to survive here in the tribal realm. All of a sudden this armored knight, this demon looking thing with metal armor that they've never seen before comes in. Of course they're gonna attack. This is their realm. This is their zone. This is their world. And Crow is a trespasser. A, a godly trespasser, but they don't know that. It's also a mortal form, so it really doesn't count. Ooh, the shield bash of the skull, my goodness. Falcon headed to the city to kill everyone there, including the Minotaur's brother, Min, Ot, and R. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Minnie's three brothers, Min, Ot, and R. And, and for those of you that don't get it, when you combine them together, they make Minotaur. Get it? Do, do, do I need to explain it some more? I, I can explain it more if you guys want. Wait a minute. No. No. I figured it out. Guys, Min is Minnie. Minnie is just the nickname that Min has. Min is this Minotaur's real name. And Minnie is the cute little pet name that we give Min. Min is a girl 
and then her two brothers Ott and R. Together, they make Minotaur. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Vulcan's here, and he's ready to uh, unleash his god powers on the unsuspecting people, including Mini, Ott, and R. Yeah, I think that's enough bombs. I think that's going to look phenomenal. Excuse me. No snakes allowed. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, the Minotaurs. Oh, it was Min, Ott, and Or. Oh, oopsies. Looks like we need to be a little more, a little more thorough. Making sure that uh, Vulcan can continue his lovely story here. So um, if you guys don't mind, we're going to use those new void arrows that we acquired in a previous video. Slow motion, activate void powers completely. Oh, Vulcan got sucked in. That's awkward. Okay, okay. This should do it. Explosions for everyone. There you go. I just took bazookas. Larry, Helga, and Sarge were joined by Benny, Mr. Death, and the Soul Keeper when Vulcan killed them. Now these guys are in the domain, in the dream domain, the world of the gods. And the ballistas are here taking shots at... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to step in here. Bombs will do the job. That was close, guys. That was close. <laughs> Vulcan headed to the Renaissance to destroy it, but he met resistance in the form of the great painter. Known for painting some of the most beautiful paintings in the Tavs universe, he is protected by 25 halibut, 10 muskets, and 6 fenders all at times. Oh, I haven't mentioned his name yet. His name is Bob. I bet you were expecting something like fancy. Like Sir Ancrylantic Bactra Monchant Berdant Senior. Nope, his name is Bob. Bob the Painter. And guys, always keep in mind, if anything goes wrong, just blame Bob. It's always Bob's fault. A wall of either axis. Is that enough god powers there for you, Vulcan? Let's find out in three, two, one, go. I also arced some of them up so that they would go and hit the back line. That was perfection. I was like, I'm sitting there and I'm doing the lower rows, right? I'm like, you know what? I better start arcing some of these up because their axes, they need to be like a moon shot, like a rainbow shot to hit that back line. And oh my goodness, was I spot on with that one. Curl been given a tracker on Falcon's location and headed to where he was, but he encountered some skeletons along the way. Our hero Crow is on his way to try and remove Falcon's god powers from him, leaving him defenseless and Crow as the only one true god. Now Crow is fighting through some skeletons to get there. So, well, because that's what he's gonna do because he's the Night Crow and that's his job. Sarge managed to open a gateway out of Vulcan's arena. But since he was Vulcan's brother, they decided to leave him there, even though he had nothing to do with what was happening. Guys, I understand that Vulcan may or may not be a bad guy or a good guy, but he is now the neighbor of Larry and Helga. Benny, why are you being so mean? Mr. Death himself, I understand that it's your job to like reap souls, but do you have to go for this one? And the Soul Keeper, I understand that you're now just following Mr. Death's orders, but you have rebelled against him before. Could you not do the same now? And Larry and Helga, shame on both of you. I'm sorry, Sarge. I tried. I really, really, really tried. Vulcan headed to King Philip's castle to destroy it, but he was stopped when Crow hit him on the head with his sword and his god powers disappeared. Guys, Vulcan all of a sudden is flanked behind him by the, the, the dream domain people teleporting out of the dream domain and landing here conveniently behind Vulcan so that Crow can give him a big old smack on the head. General John can charge it. Mr. Death himself can do the stabby, stabby, stabby. And all is well in the realm. Crow sent Vulcan to the void for all eternity. Here is Crow. There is Vulcan. And there's the door. Now, Vulcan's probably going to use a shout ability to push Crow off. But you know what? We got to get him through that door. I have just the right idea. If we take our ballista bolts and we just make a whole bunch of them, we'll shove them through that door in maximum slow-mo in three, two, one, go. Maximum slow-mo. Impact happened and he's through the door into the void. And so the world was at peace. Falcon had been defeated and trapped forever. It seemed like Larry and Helga were finally going to have a day to themselves. But there was a new threat on the horizon, and this man was going to change their lives forever. The Tax Man! Ooh. I like how the Tax Man is an executioner. <laughs> Larry hasn't paid his taxes in ages, and now it's caught up to him. Now the Tax Man is here, and the Tax Man has one job, collect taxes. If they can't pay, well, I think you can see where this is going now. I wonder if Larry's going to pay his taxes. 